Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. This go around, I show you how to make an awesome v-neck sweater. It's comfy, slouchy, and it's using a new stitch combo that makes it feel oh so classic. Speaking of classic, we've got tons of classic designs with more coming, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss out. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a thumbs up if you like it, or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now it's time to get on the show, so without further ado. For this project, any Category 4 yarn will work, but I used a total of 750 grams of yarn. That's 1,200 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 6mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order. Enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us your favorite vacation spot. For me, it's a bit of a curveball, but I like staycations. Being able to chill at the house is always great for us. Details for the giveaway down below. We're using three stitches for this project, and they'll be as follows. Chain. Slip stitch. Single crochet. And half double crochet. This tutorial is for size small, but you can adjust it for your size and makes me not to in the video, so let's get started. Getting the sweater started, we're first going to grab your category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we're going to grab our 6mm hook and start off making an even number chain that reaches from the top of our shoulder down to where we want the bottom of the sweater to be. Keeping in mind, we will have a bottom band as well. So I'm going to start by making a chain of 70. That's just about 20 inches or 51 centimeters. And now that we have our chain, we're ready to get started on our first row. Now this pattern is going to be a six row repeat. So we're going to start with the first one, which is a moss stitch row. So start by blocking off that last chain. We're going to chain one, which will count as our turning chain. And then a second chain, which is going to count as our chain. That's going to make more sense in a second. But what we're going to do from here is single crochet into the fourth chain from our hook. So let's count together one, two, three, and then four. So insert your hook into that fourth chain. We're going to yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Now that is how we form our first chain space. Let's do this again. We're now going to chain one. We're going to skip the following chain and then into the chain right after that. Insert your hook with another single crochet, forming our second chain space. And this is going to be a stitch pattern, making our all the way down, so let's do it again. Chain one. Skip the following chain and single crochet into the next. And that's it. From here, we're going to continue to chain one. Skip one stitch and single crochet into the next until we reach the end of this row. So we just made our way all the way down to the end of our row with our first row, which is a moss stitch row. Now our row two for this row sequence is going to be a single crochet row, so pretty simple. All we're going to do to start our row two is chain one and flip our work. And then from here, we're going to start by inserting our hook into that first stitch with just one single crochet. And then into the following stitch, which is this chain space, go ahead and just insert your hook into that entire gap with another single crochet and then repeat. So just find that next stitch, single crochet into there, find that next chain space, insert and single. Continue to put one single crochet into every stitch and chain space and I'll meet you guys back at the end of this row. All right, so our row two or our single crochet row is all finished up and to get started on our row three, that's gonna be another moss stitch row. We're going to do another chain two. Just like the first one, that first chain is going to count as our turning chain. That second chain is going to count as a chain and then flip our work. Now we still need the chain spaces like our first moss stitch row. So what we're going to do 
I skip that first stitch and then single crochet into the next, forming our first chain space. Let's do that again. Chain one, skip a stitch, single crochet into the next. So pretty much the same way that we did row number one. So continue to chain one, skip a stitch, single crochet into the following until we reach the end of this row. So we just made our way down to the end of our row number three, and that was a moss stitch row. And now our row four is going to be a single crochet. So just like how we did our row two. Getting started on row four, do a chain one, flip our work, and then we're going to put one single crochet into every stitch, and then also one single crochet into every chain space. And just continue to do this, making our way all the way down. All right, so we have just finished up our row four or our second single crochet row. And right after our row four, we're going to do a half double crochet row. So starting on our row five, we're going to do a chain two, flip our work, and then we're going to yarn over preparing for a half double crochet. We're going to start by inserting our hook into that first stitch from our previous row, pull through. We should have three loops on our hook, so from here, all we're going to do is yarn over and pull through all three. Let's do that again. Yarn over, into that next stitch, pull through, yarn over, and pull through all three. And continue to put one half double crochet into every stitch. We have just half double crocheted all the way down for our row five. And to get started on our last row for this row repeat, that's going to be one more half double crochet. So to get started, do a chain two, Flip your work and then make your way down, putting one half double crochet into every stitch. So we have just finished up our second half double crochet row and all together we will have one, two, three, four, five, and six rows. Now the entirety of the body will be a repeat of these six rows. We're currently working on the shoulder, so we're just going to keep repeating these six rows in the same row sequence until we have a shoulder portion that reaches from the base of our neck and until this can spill over our shoulder by just about two inches. So just to get started on our row seven, which is going to be a repeat of our first moss stitch row, we're going to chain one, that counts as our turning chain, chain two, that counts as a chain, flip our work, skip the first stitch and then into the following stitch a single crochet forming our first chain space and just keep repeating this row sequence until we have that all finished up and i'll meet you guys back right after our second half double crochet row all right so i am back with my shoulder portion i have a total of 18 rows and my width is just about five inches or 13 centimeters and now we're going to start working on the decrease half of our next scoop. So what we're first going to want to do is insert our stitch marker into an even numbered stitch along the top, that's the opposite end of our working yarn, right where we want the v-neck to start to curve. So I've inserted my stitch marker into the sixth stitch from the top and it's just about an inch and a half or four centimeters. And from here, we're gonna get started on the next row in our row sequence. And then we're going to do a decrease along the top. So since we all should have ended right after our second half double crochet row, the next row that we have in our row sequence is a moss stitch. So just to get that started with you guys, we're going to do a chain two, flip our work. We're going to skip the first stitch, single crochet into the next, chain one, skip the next stitch, single crochet into the following, doing that all the way up until we are four stitches right before our stitch marker. Now we've just made our way all the way down with our first moss stitch row that is going to have a decrease and we should have one, two, three, four stitches right before our stitch marker. And what we're going to do from here, since we all should have ended on a single crochet, we're going to chain one, skip that following stitch and then do a decrease into the next three stitches. So skip the next stitch and then into the third to last stitch, insert your hook, pull through. Also insert your hook into that second to last stitch, pull through, 
and then also into that last yarn over and pull through. Now we should have four loops on our hook. So yarn over and pull through all four. And that is how we do our decrease of three single crochets. Now we are gonna have to do a decrease of three into every row for the first half of this neckline. So let's get the next row started. So start with the chain one and flip your work. Insert your hook into that first stitch, yarn over and pull through. Insert your hook into that following stitch, which is our chain space, pull through, and then into that next stitch as well, and pull through. Should have four loops, so yarn over and pull through all four. And then from here, just put one single crochet into every stitch and chain space. And at the end of our row, we're going to get started on our moss stitch row. So do a chain two, flip your work, and then do your moss stitches, making your way all the way down until we have four stitches left again, because I'm gonna decrease with you guys. Now that we've made our way all the way up with our second moss stitch row, we should have one, two, three, and four stitches left, and we're gonna do another decrease together. So how that's going to work is after our last single crochet that we did, we're gonna chain one, and then starting with the third to last stitch, we're gonna insert our hook, yarn over, pull through. Also into that second to last stitch, and then into that last stitch, and we should have four loops left on our hook. From here, we're gonna yarn over, pull through all four of those loops, and now our second moss stitch row is done. And now we're going to do another single crochet row because that's the next row in our row sequence. So chain one and flip your work. And just like how I did the previous single crochet row, this is gonna start with a decrease as well. So insert your hook into that first stitch, pull through, into that next stitch, which is a chain space, pull through, and then into that next stitch and pull through. Should have four loops on our hook, so yarn over, pull through all four of those loops. And single crochet, making our way all the way down. The next row in our row sequence is a half double crochet row. So at the end of this row, do a chain two, flip your work, and put one half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last three stitches so that we can decrease together. So we've made our way up with our half double crochet row, and we have left one, two, three stitches, and now we're going to do a decrease. So we're gonna start with the yarn over and insert your hook into that third to last stitch, yarn over and pull through. Also into that second to last, pull through, and then into that last and pull through. Now we should have one, two, three, four, and five loops on our hook. So yarn over, pull through all five. That's how we do a decrease of three half double crochet. And just to close off our six row sequence, we're going to do our last half double crochet row. So chain two and flip your work. Now starting with a decrease of three again, we are going to yarn over, insert your hook into that first stitch, pull through, next stitch, pull through, third stitch, and pull through. Should have five loops on our hook, so yarn over and pull through all five. And then from here, put one half double crochet into every stitch. Right, so I've made my way all the way down with my half double crochet row. And from here, it's going to be a six row repeat, starting with our moss stitch row with a decrease of three at the very end. And we're going to keep repeating these six rows until this can reach the middle of our chest, making sure that we end on our second half double crochet row. That'll meet you guys back so we can work our way up with the increased side of our V-neck. Right, so I'm back with the first half of my neckline, which was the decrease side. Now I have a total of 30 rows and my width is just about nine and a half inches or 24 centimeters now. We're going to have to do one middle row and then we can go in with the increased side of our V-neck. So since we all should have ended on our second half double crochet row, our middle row is going to be just one moss stitch row with no increases and no decreases. So since we all should have ended along the bottom, we're going to do a chain two, flip our work, and then we're going to do one moss stitch row. So skip that first stitch into the following stitch, a single crochet. Chain one, skip one stitch into the following, a single crochet, and continue to do this, making our way all the way down. All right, so I've just made my way all the way up with my middle row, which was a moss stitch row with absolutely no increases or decreases. Now from here, we're going to do the increase side for the same amount 
of decreased rows that we have over here to work our way up to finish up our neckline, but we're going to be mirroring this side. So since the row right before our middle row was a half double crochet row, we're going to start with a half double crochet row on the increase side. So from here, we're going to chain two and flip our work. So since we did a decrease of three on this end, we're going to have to do an increase of three on this end. So what we're going to do is yarn over and insert your hook into that first stitch with three half double crochets. So there's one, there's two, and then there is three half double crochets. And from here, just make your way all the way down, putting one half double crochet into every stitch and into every chain space. We're going to be mirroring, so the next row that we're going to do is a half double crochet row as well. So at the end of this row, do a chain two, flip your work, and put one half double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last one so that we can increase together again. So our second half double crochet row is nearly finished. We've made our way all the way up, putting one into every stitch, but we have left the last one so that we can do an increase of three together. So to get that started, we're going to yarn over, and then into that last stitch, we're going to be inserting with three half double crochets. So there's one, there is two, and then there is three half double crochets. Once we have that, the next row that we have in a row sequence, since we're mirroring the other side, is going to be a single crochet row. So right after our second half double crochet row, just chain one and flip your work. Into that first stitch, we're going to do an increase of three single crochets. So insert with one into that same first stitch with your second, and then into that same first stitch with your third. And from here, continue to put one single crochet into every stitch. And the next row that we have in our row sequence is a moss stitch row. So at the end of this row, do a chain two, flip your work, and then do your moss stitches, making your way all the way up until we have just two stitches left. So we just finished up our single crochet row and then made our way back up with our moss stitch row, leaving the last two stitches. From here, we're going to chain one, skip the second to last stitch, and then into that last stitch, do an increase of three single crochets. So insert your hook with one into that same last stitch, with two, and then the same last stitch with three single crochets. And now we're going to do the next row in a row sequence, which is a single crochet row. So chain one and flip your work. We're going to be doing another increase of three into that first stitch. So go ahead and insert your hook into there with one single crochet into that same first stitch with your second and then into the same first stitch with your third. And make your way down, putting one single crochet into every stitch. And at the end of the row, do a chain two, flip your work, and then make your way up doing our moss stitches, leaving the last two stitches just so that we can increase together once more. All right, so we have just made our way up with our moss stitch row leaving the last two and we're just going to do one more increase with each other. So we're going to chain one, skip that second to last stitch and then into the last do an increase of three single crochets. So go ahead and insert your hook with one single crochet into that same last stitch with two and then into that same last stitch with three single crochets. And now from here it's going to be a repeat of our six previous rows. We're going to start with an increase of three half double crochets and then do your half double crochet row. I'm just going to get that start off with you guys and then we're just going to repeat those six rows for the same amount of rows that we have that we decreased. Just to get started with the half double, do a chain two and flip your work. Insert your hook into that first stitch with one half double crochet, into that same first stitch with your second, and same first stitch with your third. And make your way all the way down, putting one half double crochet into every stitch. Go ahead and get the rest of these rows done. And then I'll meet you guys back so we can work on our shoulder. All right, so I am back with the increase side of my V-neck. And from here, what we're going to do is do the shoulder. So we're gonna start by making a chain the same amount of stitches that we skipped on this side. So if you guys have my numbers, I skipped a total of six stitches. So along this end, I'm going to make a chain of six. Now that we have our chain, we're going to block off that last chain and do a chain two because the next row that we have in a row sequence is a half double crochet row. After that chain two, we are going to yarn over and then half double crochet into that chain that we blocked off or the third chain from our hook. So go ahead and insert, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three, 
And then from here, we're going to put one half double crochet into every chain and then also one half double crochet into every stitch, making our way all the way down. And then from here, we're just going to continue to do our six row sequence for the same amount of rows that we have for this shoulder portion right over here. Remembering that our row sequence is now mirrored. So it's going to be a half double crochet, a second half double crochet, single crochet, moss stitch row, single crochet row, and then moss stitch row. I will meet you guys back once we have that all finished up and then do a chain up of one and cut. All right, so I've just finished up the entirety of my front panel. I did do a chain up of one and cut after my last row. And now from here, we can get started on our back panel. So the back panel is going to start off the same way that we started off the first shoulder portion. So start by making the same chain that we made when we started off this section. And then we're going to maintain the same six row sequence. So moss stitch, single crochet, moss stitch, single crochet, and then two half double crochets. We're just going to keep repeating those six rows with no increases and no decreases until we reach the last row that we have right before our middle row. And then I will meet you guys back so that we can do the middle row together. All right, so I have the first half of my back panel all finished up. And now I'm ready to do my middle row. Just like how we did the front panel, it's going to be a moss stitch row with no increases and no decreases. So just from where we're at, do a chain two, flip our work, and then make your way all the way down with our moss stitch row. So our middle row for the back panel is all finished up. It was just a moss stitch row, and now we're just going to finish up our back panel doing the same thing that we started off doing, but we are going to start with our half double crochet first because we need to mirror all of these rows. And we're mirroring all these rows so that once we seam the back panel and the front panel together, all of our shoulders can be worked within the same side rows. So all we're gonna do is start with a half double crochet, do a second half double crochet row, a single crochet row, a moss stitch row, single and moss stitch. Keep repeating those six rows. For the remainder amount of back panel rows that we have, we wanna make sure that we have the same amount of rows as the front panel. Do a chain up one and cut, and then I'll meet you guys back. All right, so I am back and I've just finished the entirety of my back panel. Once when I had the same amount of rows as my front panel, I did do a chain up of one and cut, and now we're ready to seam the front to the back. So what we're going to do is place our front panel on top of our back panel. We're going to insert our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. We're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, and then do a chain up of one to secure. And now we're going to do a single crochet seam, making sure that we're working into both the front and the back panel at the same time. So let's get that started. We're gonna be putting one single crochet into every moss and into every single crochet row and then two single crochets into every side half double crochet row. So let's just get the first set started. The first side row that we should have right here is a moss stitch. So I'm going to insert my hook into that corner stitch of the front panel and then into that same stitch into the back panel and then single crochet. Now the next side row that we should have is a single crochet row. So I'm gonna find that top loop and insert into the front panel and also Find that single crochet row within the back and insert your hook into the top of that row as well with a single crochet. My next side row is this side moss. So I'm gonna insert my hook into that top loop. Find the next side moss into the back panel, insert your hook into there and single crochet. And then the row right after that is a single crochet. So find that top loop into the front and find the top loop into the back with a single crochet. And now that we have that, we have two half double crochet rows to work into. So I'm gonna start by finding that first side half double crochet row, insert my hook into there, then find the same side half double crochet row into the back panel and insert your hook into there with one single crochet. And then we're gonna be doing one more into that same side half double crochet. So insert your hook into the front panel and then into that same loop into the back panel and single crochet. Now you should have two single crochets into that side half double. We have one more side half double left to do, so let's just do that one more time. Find the top loop into the half double crochet row and insert your hook. Find the same top loop into the back panel, insert your hook into there with one single crochet, and then we're gonna be putting one more into the same side half double. 
So into the front panel, insert your hook, and then into the back panel, insert your hook with a single crochet. And we're going to keep doing this, making our way all the way down until we don't have any more side rows into the front panel left to work into. Do a chain up of one and cut, and then we're going to repeat everything that we just did here on the other side, and then I'll meet you guys back so we can seam our sides. So our shoulders are all seamed up, and we are ready to get started to seam the sides. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is insert our stitch marker into an even numbered stitch from the top, right where I want our armhole to start. So I've inserted my stitch marker into the 26th stitch, and this is just about 8 inches or 22 centimeters. Once we have that, we're ready to get started with our seam. Start by inserting your hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Insert your yarn onto your hook, pull through, and then do a chain up of one to secure. And now from here, we're just going to single crochet, making sure that we're working into both the front and the back panel at the same time. So we're gonna find our first stitch that we have right here and insert our hook into the front panel. Find the same stitch into the back panel, insert your hook, and then single crochet them together. Let's do this again. Find that next available stitch that you have into the front panel, and then that next available stitch that you have into the back panel, and then single crochet them together, and that is about it. We're going to keep single crocheting both of our panels together until we reach our stitch marker. Do a chain up and one cut, and then do the same thing that we just did here on the other side. So now that everything is all seamed up, the next thing we're going to do is start working on our sleeve. So we're all going to start by inserting a hook into the stitch that's nearest to our side seam. We're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, and we're going to start by making an even number chain the length that we want our sleeve to be. Now I want my sleeve to be just about 17 inches or 43 centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain of 62. And now that we have our chain, we are going to get started on our first row, which is going to be a moss stitch row, because this row sequence is going to be the same row sequence that we did for the body. So to get our first moss stitch row started, we are going to block off that last chain and chain one. That counts as our turning chain. Make a second chain, and that chain is going to count as a chain. And from here, we're going to single crochet into the fourth chain from our hook. So let's count that out together. Here's one, two, three, and four. Into that fourth chain, go ahead and insert your hook with a single crochet, forming our first chain space. And then just chain one, skip one chain, and then into the following, do another single crochet. And we are going to maintain doing a chain one, skipping a stitch and single crocheting into the following, making our way all the way down towards the base. And now that we've made our way all the way down towards the base, we're going to need to connect it. To close off our first row, we're going to find that next available stitch that we have, and we're going to insert with a slip stitch to connect it. So there's our first row. Now, like I said, we're going to be maintaining the same row sequence as the body, so the next row is going to be a single crochet row. So all we're going to do is find that next stitch into the base, and slip stitch into there to work our way up to the next row. Flip our work, and we're going to put one single crochet into every stitch. So just do the first few. We're going to find that last stitch from our previous row. Insert your hook into there with a single crochet. Into that next stitch with a single, next stitch with a single. Now once we reach the end of this row, we're going to do a chain two, flip our work, and then do our moss stitches, making our way all the way back. I'll meet you guys back again so that we can connect it into the base. Now we are nearly finished with our row number three. We're going to connect it into the base the same way that we just did. So let's find that next available stitch into the base, slip stitch into there, and then to work our way up to the next row, which is going to be a single crochet, slip stitch into that next stitch into the base, and flip your work. From here, put one single crochet into every stitch. And the next row in our row sequence is going to be a half double crochet. So at the end of the row, do a chain two, flip our work, and then put one half double crochet into every stitch until we reach the base, and then I'll meet you guys back so we can connect it as well. All right, we are nearly finished with our row number five. We're just gonna connect it into the base again, and it's gonna be connected the same way as all of our other rows. So we're gonna start by finding that next stitch into the base, 
and we're going to slip stitch into there to close off this row. And then to work our way up to the next row, we're going to find that next stitch into the base, slip stitch into there, flip our work. And then since we are about to start on our row number six, this is going to be a half double crochet row. So put one half double crochet into every stitch. Now after this row, this is going to be the last row of our six row sequence. So I'll meet you guys back at the end of this row, just so I can talk to you guys how to do the rest. All right, so we are all done with our row number six or our second half double crochet row. And now all we're going to do is repeat starting with row one. So just as a refresher, we're going to do a moss stitch row, a single, moss stitch, single, and then two half double crochet rows. And we're gonna keep repeating those four rows until we don't have any more stitches left to work into into the base. And that'll meet you guys back so we can seam everything together. But I just wanna get started on the seventh row with you guys, which is a moss stitch row. So just start with a chain two since we're along the end. Flip our work. You're going to skip that first stitch, single crochet into the following, forming our first chain space. Chain one, skip a stitch, single crochet, and continue to do this until we reach the end of the row. I will meet you guys back once when we have the entirety of our sleeve all finished up. We are back and we have just finished up making our way all the way around with our sleeve. We don't have any more stitches left to work into into the base, so now we're going to seam it. So the first thing we're going to want to do is make sure that our work is flipped wrong side out so that all of our seams can be on the same side. And then we're going to insert our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Now that our hook is in through both, we're going to pull through, do a chain up of one to secure it. And now we're just going to do a single crochet seam, working into both the front and the back panel at the same time. So just to get the first few started off, since this is going to be the same seam as our side seam, we're gonna find that first available stitch into the front panel, and then find that first available stitch into the back panel. And then we're gonna yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. There's our first single crochet, let's just do one more. Find that next stitch into my front panel, next stitch into my back panel, and single crochet. And keep doing this until we don't have any more stitches left. Do a chain up one and cut, and then I'll meet you guys back so we can get started on the cuff. So now that our sleeve is all seamed up, we're ready to get started on our cuff. So the first thing we're gonna do is slip our work right side out now. And then we're going to be inserting our hook into any one of the side rows that we have along the bottom of our sleeve. We're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure, and now we're going to single crochet all the way around, but we're gonna be doing a decrease of two single crochets into every two side rows. So let's get that started. Start by inserting your hook into that first side row that we have. Mine is this moss stitch, but if yours is a different side row, that's completely fine. Just insert your hook into there. I'm going to yarn over and pull through. We're next going to find the next side row that we have. Mine is the single crochet. So I'm going to find that top loop, yarn over, pull through. And then once we have three loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops. Now that's how we do our decrease. And we're going to maintain this, making our way all the way around. So let's do this again. Start by finding that next side row that we have. Mine is a small stitch. So I'm going to insert my hook, yarn over, pull through, find the next side row, which is this single crochet right here. Insert your hook into that top loop and pull through. From here, we're going to yarn over, pull through all three loops. And that is our second one. We're going to continue to do this, making our way all the way around. Slip stitch into that chain space that we made when we started off this row, and then I will meet you guys back. So now that we have just single crocheted along the entirety of the bottom of our sleeve, we're now going to make a chain the length that we want our cuff to be. Now I want mine to be just about two inches or five centimeters, so I'm gonna start by making a chain of 12. Now that we have our chain, we are gonna block off that last chain and do a chain one. That chain one doesn't count as a stitch, that's just our turning chain. And then into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook, we're going to insert with a slip stitch. So what we're gonna do is insert, yarn over and pull through both of those loops that's on our hook. And a quick tip that I have is once when you finish your slip stitch, make sure that you're not accidentally tugging on your working yarn. Otherwise the next row is gonna be really difficult to work into. So let's do this again. Insert your hook into that next chain, yarn over, pull through everything, into that next chain, insert your hook, yarn over, and pull through everything. Continue to put one slip stitch into every chain. 
And now that we've put one slip stitch into every chain, we're now ready to connect it into the base. So all we're gonna do is find that next available stitch, and we're gonna insert our hook into there with a slip stitch to close off this first row. And once we have this, we're going to do more slip stitch rows, but now they're gonna be within the back loops, but we need to work our way up to the next row first. So start by slip stitching up the next stitch into the base and flip our work. And what we're going to do from here is find that last stitch from our previous row and insert your hook only into that back loop, yarn over and pull through everything. Let's do this again. Into that next stitch's back loop, insert, yarn over, pull through everything, making sure that we're not tugging on our work yarn after every stitch and continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left. We are now at the end of our row two and just to work our way up to the row three together, do a chain one, flip our work and continue with our back loop slip stitches. So find that first stitch's back loop, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through everything and continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch until we reach the base because I want to connect it into there with y'all one more time. And now that we've made our way all the way down with our row three, we're just going to connect it into the base. So find that next available stitch, insert your hook into there with one slip stitch to close off our row three. Then to work our way up to our row four, insert your hook with a slip stitch, flip your work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And from here, all we're going to do is keep repeating these two rows of back loop slip stitches until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. And then I will meet you guys back so that we can seam our cuff together. All right, so we have just made our way all the way around with our back loop slip stitch rows. We don't have any left to work into, so now we're just going to seam it together. So this seam is going to be an outside loop slip stitch seam, so we're going to want to make sure that our work is still flipped right side out. And from here, we're going to insert our hook into the corner stitch of the back panel, yarn over, pull through everything to secure. And now just to do the first few, we're going to find that first stitch from the front panel and insert only in through that front loop. Next, we're going to find the next available stitch into the back panel and only insert in through that back loop. Once we have that, we're going to yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. Now that is our first outside loop slip stitch seam. Let's do this again. Find that next available stitch and insert only in through the front loop. And then we're going to find that next stitch and insert only in through that back loop, yarn over, Pull through everything and let's just do one more. Into that next stitch, insert only in through the front loop. And then into that next stitch, insert only in through that back loop. Yarn over and pull through everything. Now we're going to continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left and then do a chain up one and cut. After that, we can repeat everything that we just did here on the other side. All right, so we have just finished up both of our sleeves and the cuff, and now we're going to start working on the bottom band. So what we're going to do from here is soon crochet along the bottom as well. So start by inserting your hook into any one of the side rows that we have along the bottom. Insert your yarn onto your hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure. And for the bottom band, we're just going to be putting one single crochet into every side row. So starting with our first side row that we have, this is mine right here. This is a side half double. If yours is another side row, that's completely fine. Just find that top loop, insert your hook into there with one single crochet. Go ahead and find our next side row. Mine is another side half double. So find that top loop, single crochet into there, and then just continue to put one single crochet into every side row that we have. When we don't have any more side rows left to work into, Slip stitch into that chain space, and then I will meet you guys back so we can start working on the bottom band. So our single crochet row is all finished up, and now we're going to get started on the length of our bottom band. We're going to start off by making a chain the length that we want our bottom band to be, and I want mine to be just about 3 inches, or 8 centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain of 17. Now that we have our chain, we are going to block off that last chain, do a chain 1, and then into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook, insert with a slip stitch. So go ahead and insert. Should be two loops on our hook, so yarn over and pull through both of those loops, remembering not to tug on your working yarn after we finish a stitch. This is gonna be done the same way that we did the cuff. So start off by putting one slip stitch into every chain. Now that we've made our way all the way down with our slip stitch row, we now need to connect it into the base. So find that first available stitch, 
insert your hook into there with a slip stitch. And then just to work our way up to the next row, slip stitch up the next stitch into the base, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. At the end of the row, do a chain one, flip your work, and then continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, connecting it into the base the same way that we just did. From there, continue to repeat those two rows until we don't have any more stitches left. And I'll meet you guys back so we can seam our bottom band together. All right, so I am back and I've just finished up going in with my back loop slip stitch rows. I don't have any more stitches left to work into and now we're going to seam it. This is gonna be the same seam that we did for the cuff. So an outside loop slip stitch seam. So first make sure that your work is slipped right side out. Then we are going to insert our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. And then from here, we're going to yarn over and pull through everything. And from here, just to do the first one, since we already know how to do it, we're gonna find that first available stitch into the front panel and insert your hook only in through that front loop. And then find that next available stitch into the back panel and insert in through that back loop. Should have three loops on our hook, so just yarn over and pull through all three. And that's it. We're gonna continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left and then do a chain up of one and cut. So our bottom band is all seamed up and now the next thing we're gonna do is our collar. So we're all gonna start by inserting our hook into any one of the stitches along the back panel and we're just going to do a single crochet along the entirety of our piece. So just to do the first few single crochets with you guys, I'm going to insert my yarn onto my hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure, and all I'm gonna do is put one single crochet into every side row. So all I'm gonna do is find that first side row that I have right here, which is a side half double crochet row. I'm gonna insert my hook into there with one single crochet. I'm going to find my next side row, which is the side single crochet row. Insert my hook into there with one single crochet. Keep doing this, making our way all the way around. Slip stitch into that chain space and I'll meet you guys back to do our last row. Our single crochet row along the collar is all finished up. To do our last row, it's going to be another single crochet row, but within the back loop so we can get a really nice rib for the collar. So all we're gonna do is chain one and making sure that we're working in the same direction that we were previously working in, we're going to put one back loop single crochet into every stitch. So just to do the first view, we're going to find that first available stitch from a previous row, insert into that back loop with just one single crochet. Also into that following stitch, insert into that back loop with one single crochet, and then into that next back loop with another single crochet. And that's it. We're gonna keep doing this, making our way all the way around, slip stitch into that chain space, and then do a chain up of one and cut. All right, so I've just made my way all the way around with my second single crochet that was in the back loops. I slip stitch into that chain space and did a chain up of one and cut. Once we have that, we are all done. The last thing we're gonna have to do is weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. Hope you guys enjoy the tutorial. Check us out on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.